Hi, I hope you're well. Um, welcome to this new project focused video. I'm very happy to be doing one of these again. It's been one year since the last one. That's a lot. And it made me a bit sad when I realized it because I do really love making these videos. They're a bit more special. But um, they take um, more time to do and um, they require a little bit more um, mind space and planning and I haven't been really good with allowing myself time in the past year. I've been letting um, work related designs and stuff kind of pile on each other and that's quite bad and it's something that I plan to work on and to stop doing in the next year so hopefully that will mean that um, I will be able to do um, a few other project focused videos uh, in 2020 so yeah to hopefully kind of mark the return of these um, I have started to do something really really nice and um, so yeah, you kind of need to find the right project for it as well. And I have been eyeing uh, a certain uh, design. Licky licky dog. Logan, eh? No. <laughs> it's just such a silly boy. Yeah, you keep doing that. Unbelievable. Logan, no. <laughs> Like whenever he does something like um, licking his feet like a maniac uh, and you want him to stop and you call him to stop, he will stop, he will stop doing what he's doing but he will not look at you. Wait a couple seconds and then start again as if nothing happened. You have to like make him look at you so he actually stops whatever it is that he's doing. Stop. Yeah. Now he's grumpy grumpy dog <laughs> um anyway sidetrack already with the puppies yeah you kind of have to ha have the right project and i've been uh, keeping an eye on fiber tails uh, on one of fiber tails designs that she's been working on and it's a textured sweater now at the time where i'm uh, talking to you it doesn't have a name yet and it's not released so i don't have a name to share but it's an amazing oversized, chunky, cozy jumper with, um, as usual with uh, Fiber Tails design, a lot of really nice details, really innovative, uh, lovely details. And yeah, I kinda, <laughs> I really like testing for other designers. It's, um, it's a really lovely thing to do. You get so much in depth um, knowledge of their design process and well as a designer myself like it's I really appreciate seeing how other people works and I fa other people work and I, I find it's really um, bringing me something to see other ways of writing and explaining things that are completely different from mine and in Fibertail's case um, I've already um, knitted uh, some of her design another one test as well and I really like how she writes her patterns there. I feel really different from mine in, in the sense that they're very concise and they make perfect sense, but they still require you to kind of to kind of use your, your brain cells a little bit. And I really, really like that. And it's really exciting for me whenever I knit one of her uh, designs. So I've decided to ask if I uh, like to apply for the test knit of this particular oversized sweater and I'm very fortunate that she said yes and so here we go this project focus is going to be a test knit so it will come out whenever the pattern is released uh, I haven't told her that I'm doing this I hope she won't mind <laughs> but yeah um, I yeah I'm really really excited not only because like I said the design is lovely it's this um, oversized drop shoulder cropped sweater um, with mostly honeycomb brioche a 
cable panel at the front and really smart braiding details like really really clever little things nifty techniques and everything that i can't wait to do and yeah so i have started the pattern um uses a combination of yarns the original sample uh, by fiber tails uses snail down yarns which you know i've talked about it was actually in one of my project focus videos i absolutely love snail down yarns it's like a wooly rustic yarn that blooms so she used snail down uh three ply so they're dk slash worsted weight and a mohair lace weight together now it took me a little bit to find out what yarn i wanted to use for some reason i really wanted it to be green I just I wanted a dark pine green, like a rich green sweater. And so it took me a little bit to find the perfect combination that will give me, um, I thought, the right gauge and the right color. And so I ended up choosing two yarns from two different French brands. Um, the main yarn is Nambus by Fonti. So Fonti is one of the main yarn uh, brands in France. It's one that has the one of the last mills uh, that is still processing in France. They're the one who do the yarn for Derero Natura, for example. You probably know this brand. And they have a range that is quite similar. And recently they released Fonti. Uh, they released Nambus. And recently they released Nambus, which is a a really thick sport weight. It has 150 meter to 50 grams and so it's quite plump and it's a blend of French Art Merino and Portuguese uh, Grey Merino and it's exactly the same blend as Ulysse from De Rum Natura for example if you know it. I'm referencing De Rum Natura because often people know this brand abroad. It's exactly the same type of blend, except Ulysse is a uh, woolen span, and this is worsted span. And so it's the same kind of wooly, nice feel, a bit softer, and it's rounder and plumper. And so it blooms less, it's a bit heavier, and it has a slightly better definition. I mean, Ulis has a great definition from the start, but it has four plies and yeah, it's worsted spun. So you kind of get the best of both, both worlds because you have a really natural merino, non superwash wool. So it's, it's natural soft. And at the same time, it's worsted spun. So it's like this really big plump thread that has a good definition and so the colorway is just perfect uh, let me see if it has a um, a number what was it 715 it's just a pine green but anyway this was the color i wanted so i only needed to find a mohair uh, that matched because even though the yarn that Fibertails uses in her sample is DK slash worsted, I kind of knew that this yarn would work because I have worked with Snail, snail Dan uh, three ply as well and it's quite fine for a DK. It blooms, so that's that accommodates a very a varied um, spectrum of gauges. So I kind of knew that this would fit in uh, this range. If I added the mohair uh, thread like she does and I found the green too much and so this is a, your typical mohair silk lace weight it's 58% mohair 42% silk and this is Lang yarns which is kind of the other really famous uh, French yarn brand and it's called Lang lace simply lace and it's like yeah mohair um, and so the two together and like they match perfectly even though here they kind of look different on camera but they match perfectly in color once knitted and i am very very happy with my choice i got them from anna uh, lana et Trico, which has a yarn shop in grenoble in the eastern south not middle in eastern part of france uh, in the mountains 
she has a lovely shop she has an online shop as well you probably might know her uh, she podcasts in french and in spanish so in case you're a spanish um, uh, speaker uh, she speaks spanish too and she's a really lovely person with an amazing uh, shop and i um yeah i ordered this from her and she was so sweet she felt bad because she had some um uh, she had to order some of the yarn because i like I ordered everything that she had to make this sweater um, and uh, yeah she had to order it directly from her supplier and she had like she, she I had to wait a few days and it's funny how uh, some people um, they're ridiculously kind and there was really no problem at all uh, but yeah she she gave me up to date with it and I actually received it well enough during the time period um, that I was expecting it and so it's fine I swatched as you saw and uh, for some reason I assumed I would need tighter than Lerga did in her uh, sample she used a 5 millimeter needle and so I assumed I would need at least 5.5 and so I swatched in 5.5 millimeter needle and I was wrong um, because this is a bit too loose. Um, it's one stitch too big and it, it, it actually is a bit too loose for my taste. So I am, um, I don't know if I said it, I'm knitting size small, so it's size two, so the second size. And it's gonna give me like around 40 centimeter, like more, almost 50 centimeters, I think, which is uh, what's recommended. And um, so I decided to well, go back to 5mm needles and this time I got perfect gauge and I actually started the project and I cast on. So the sweater is knitted uh, flat, so you knit the, well, flat in pieces. You knit the back, you knit the front, you join them together and then you knit the sleeves in the round and you seam them and then you knit the, ne the neckline. And so I started knitting the back and here's what I have so far. I'm just happy going with it. I decided to start with the back just so that um, I could relax a little bit at first. And uh, ooh, I missed a I missed a mohair thread here. It doesn't matter. So yeah, you're holding the yarns double, so I kind of have to be a bit more careful and not um, not drop half of it <laughs> when I'm knitting in the stitches. But uh, yeah, so like I said, it's a mix of different textures. And on the back you have honeycomb brioche, which is starting a little bit here. You can sort of see it starting. And reverse stockinette. And here you have a really clever little thing that's gonna become a braid. And it's my favorite thing in this design and I can't wait to make it and show you um, how it looks when it's done. So yeah, I cast on, I've knitted the hem and yeah, um, it's going pretty fast because it's on like big needles and it's really pleasant to do. The honeycomb brioche, the method that is written in the pattern is really nice because um, like it's mostly knitting uh, and you just can easily read what you're doing um, without following the chart and it just makes them really lovely if I show you my swatch like a really lovely plumpy thing so yeah this is what I have so far I'm gonna keep going up 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 and yeah I'll bring you along uh, well my holidays because we are at the end of November now and so I think this project focus is gonna span across across the end of the year and the beginning of 2020 so this vlog is probably gonna be filled uh, like last year's one um, it's gonna be filled with um, a little bit of holiday stuff. I'm going to Romania in December again uh, to spend Christmas with my boyfriend and his family and we're going into really beautiful places and I can't wait to show you. So yeah, I'll be uh, sharing snippets of that as well for this vlog. And yeah, let's start this new project focus with the for now, unnamed <laughs> Fibertoes, beautiful, beautiful sweater.
finished the back as you can see well sort of what I really really am loving about this project is that you're not doing anything specific you're not doing anything special but it still creates interesting results that you're not doing anything for um, so the, the first thing is the shaping uh, so it looks a little bit scrunched up now but um, I think that when I'm gonna block it it's gonna look a bit more obvious but basically um, I'll talk about this <laughs> in a bit basically you have the panels of honeycomb brioche to the side and the reverse stocking it in the middle and since the honeycomb brioche is more row dense than stocking it it ends up being shorter than the rest so as you can see eventually it's gonna curve at the bottom like this and not only is it going to make a curved hem but it also means that you already have your shoulder shaping and you're not doing anything for that and I just think that's really that's really fun I really like when you can create shaping in your knitting without actively doing something for it like you're not making short rows or anything you're just you're shaping because of how different textures work and how it's, you can sort of do the same thing with cables and certain lace like when you have a scalloped hem uh, at the bottom of a lace panel um, it's the same type of effect and I find this really really fun um, and so this thing happened and then you have what I think is one of my favorite details of this design and it's this braid and it's really clever um, when I first saw the pictures of the design I didn't really understand what was going on but it's really really fun to do um, yeah you I'm not giving away <laughs> how it works but it's yeah you're basically picking up uh, stitches when you make this really big chunky braid and I was afraid it would be a bit fiddly because we're using I'm using uh, two strands with the mohair but actually no um, it went really well and smooth on one side so I'm just about to do the the other side um, and I'll be done with the back um, yeah I'm having lots of fun with this uh, I can't wait to continue it I'm gonna have to um, pause a little bit on it quite a few times actually because um, now I have to work on something quite urgent um, and then I will have to um, well go on holiday <laughs> and I don't know if I'll have it completed before I leave on holiday we'll see but yeah I I do want to keep working on it but I'm also enjoying taking my time um, because it's really fun and mindless and the different things that you have to do really keep me um, interested in it and I'm really enjoying it so yes I'm gonna finish my back I'm changing a little thing I've asked the designer if I could um, try and do the shoulders as a three needle bind off rather than a seam um, she said uh, yeah I could try this to see how it looks because she um, she recommends to bind off the stitches and then seam them together um, but I never want to do that <laughs> um, I'm not really good at seeming horizontally bound off things and I know it's not gonna look very good so I asked her if I could try the three needle bind off and um, yeah she wants to see as well how it's gonna look in the honeycomb brioche if you can make it so that you don't have a huge gap between the texture when you join back and front so I'm gonna try that and tell her um, if it works well I hope so because like I said <laughs> if I have to bind off and seam it's not gonna look good <laughs> anyway um, but yes um, really having fun with it 
I am loving the yarn. Um, it's my first time trying out. Well, it's 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 a rather new yarn. Uh, I believe I told you the Nambus one, so my main um, my main yarn, the merino, uh, the French merino and Portuguese merino um, wool. I'm really loving it. I think it's a beautiful, beautiful yarn, and yeah, I I'm thinking of using it in everything, <laughs> and yeah the color is perfect i don't think i have any knitwear in this color yet which is ridiculous but uh yes. i'm gonna keep working on this and yeah bring you along um we are at the end of november now um and yeah i think this project focus again <laughs> is gonna have a slight holiday theme because I'm definitely gonna film some bits of my holiday if um, if I can. But yes, we're having uh, a little getaway with my boyfriend in a really beautiful city. So I expect I expect that I'll have pretty things to show. But um, yeah, really, really enjoying the sweater at the moment. Uh, how it works, how clever bits and pieces are um, which is usually the case with the, with this designer um, so yeah I will keep doing my bread you can't see what I'm doing I'm not showing how it works but it's really smart <laughs> trust me um, but yes I'll keep showing you little snippets of the making shaped ones. <laughs> um, it's more a tradition from the northeast of France, I guess. Um, but anything baking related will do. Um, yeah, they're a little orange blossom bun. Basically, like, it's a pretty normal brioche, brioche dough um, with a little bit of orange blossom water in them. Um, which is like my favorite flavor ever. I gather that is not really common outside of um, France and um, Maghreb countries, orange blossom water, but uh, it is really really good in brioche, in various biscuits and cakes and I really really like it. I also like to put a little bit of it on um, warm uh, milk or eggnog type of thing it's really really good and in these little buns it's really good and basically the little eyes and buttons are chocolate chips and yeah this is just a little Saint Nicholas 
um, thing that my mother does because I can't be bothered <laughs> to shape them but yeah um, the little um, festive tradition that we do they're really really good and I'm going to eat that thing because I'm pretty hungry so yeah I've been I started on the front I'm going to insert here a little clip of me knitting on the front or just showing the front maybe I've started over a couple of times because um, like first I misread something because I started at night and I was really tired with a bad headache and then there was a little hiccup in the instructions so I had to restart a couple of times but now I think I'm I think I'm all right on track it does look like the designer sample so I think it's good and yeah I'm just gonna keep going the the good thing about having to start over is that now I really know the pattern how it works it's really intuitive basically you have short repeats and uh, you pretty much know what it, what to do on every round so I'm just counting the rows of the big cable so that I um, make it in the right spot um, but then the other little motifs like the small bubbles and the elongated uh, stitches um, thing um, which is what <laughs> caused me a little bit of issue at first um, this uh, is pretty um, easy to keep track of once you've understood <laughs> what you're supposed to do um, but yeah now um, I'm all set um, I'm gonna go and keep doing the front I don't know how much I'm going to be able to advance it but I think I should have um, the whole body done uh, before I leave on holidays I hope so um, yeah and gonna keep knitting <music>
that sweater. Um, it now has a name. Lerge from Fibre Tales, she decided to call it Favo, which means uh, honeycomb in Italian, she said. Um, so I think it's very fitting, especially now that I'm on the sleeves, which are um, basically knitted in a round with the honeycomb brioche pattern. And it's a little bit trickier, I'm not gonna lie. Um, I would definitely have done them um, flat uh, by choice because the um, you have to uh, purl a row since you're uh, in the round now. Uh, and it's a little bit, it's much slower and it's a little bit uncomfortable. I am much more comfortable knitting my sleeves on mini circulars and so Unfortunately, that means that every time I need to uh, purl or do some sort of texture play, it just gets really uncomfortable and slow. But that's alright now, because i um, reaching the end of the second one, so I'm about to be finished. And um, yeah, basically, I have completed the body. And I blocked it, uh, just so that I would get an idea of how it was going to fit. And so, hey, uh, it looks really, really nice. Yeah, I couldn't resist the satisfaction of blocking the honeycomb brioche. And yeah, so what did I do? I joined the shoulders using a three needle bind off because I believe I mentioned it before, but um. Like I'm really bad at horizontal seams on the shoulders. They always look awful. <laughs> it's really, really nasty. So I did a three needle bind off and it's much neater for me that way. I also seamed, so I blocked it first. Um, I made sure it was all nice and stretched out so that the cable panel could shine. Yeah, the light isn't really making that color justice yet, yeah, but hopefully when I'll take pictures I'll be able to adjust light and settings so that it actually shows this really beautiful pine green. Yeah, it's a little bit more true to color now. So yeah, I blocked it and then I mattress seamed um, the sides, leaving the opening for the sleeve. So it should match, I hope. <laughs> um, and yeah, then I did the neckline because I couldn't wait and basically you fold it over and I attached it um, I believe I recorded a little clip of that I attached it and it's just nice and squishy and it makes it all look very very comfy I'm quite surprised at how light it is it just I didn't use that much yarn in the end um, so yeah it does it doesn't weigh anything, but yeah, it's just really chunky looking, bulky, comfy knit. So I'm really, really eager to finish it all and um, have final impressions on the fit and everything. But yeah, I'm still really, really enjoying it and really enjoying the little details about how you finish the honeycomb on the top. Um, so that it, it's smooth when you join the pieces together. You do that as well at the top of the sleeve. So yeah, this is my second sleeve. It's almost done. You knit them not too long because obviously it's quite a drop shoulder. But um, yeah, I think I'm gonna finish that in the next couple of hours and I'm going to block them, make sure they're nice, stretched and airy, and then I'm gonna seam them into the shoulders and I think I will see you again just to show you the finished project, so... So let's show you how I set up to seam the sleeves, so it's a little bit wonky <laughs> because when I blocked the body, the place where I uh, three needle bind off the shoulder um, is a little bit tighter than the position where the honeycomb has extended as I was blocking it. So it makes a little bit <laughs> of a weird shape here, but I made sure to block the sleeve so that it would be 
the exact uh, size as the armhole that I sewed up. So I think I managed to make it work. Basically I placed uh, locking pins. I first attached the underarm points together, then the head of the shoulder together. As you can see this is where the thing is a little bit fiddly. And then I placed pins in the middle every time of each section. Basically it's sort of like how you do it when you're actually sewing, I suppose. But yeah, now I'm pretty satisfied with how many pins I have. It looks secure enough. Um, so I'm gonna go and try to mattress seam that and hopefully the overall shape will be good. It's not so easy to mattress seam honeycomb brioche together. Um, yeah, another reason why I guess I would have picked up the sleeves from there, but it's okay. I'm trying to improve my skills and I'm gonna make it work. So, yep. <laughs> doesn't seem to want to get out so I guess we're gonna do it like this but it kind of fits the mood of the sweater uh, so it's now completed the sleeves have been sewn as I showed you I am really happy with it I absolutely love how it looks it kind of has a moody dark kind of vibe to it I don't know I really like how cozy and how large and yeah you can kind of wrap yourself with the long sleeves and everything and um, yeah I I don't know if it's a little bit too short for me um, the thing is with the dress it's it's great but I kind of feel like it would because you see like this is my natural waist my <laughs> literally my bust starts here and if I'm moving the sides tend to ride up a little bit too much um, it's not like I'm gonna wear it with um, just a bra under it anyway but um, yeah I think maybe five-ish centimeters would have been all right for me but it's still very wearable and over a dress um, I think it's gonna be great I might need to find the perfect like either dress or high-waisted skirts or pants to um, wear with it because I don't think that this grey linen although beautiful I don't think it's quite the right um, color or shape but yeah I might need to give it some thought but it is so so comfy I really like um, the feel of the yarn as well so um, I highly recommend this combination of yarn if you can get a hold of these brands I know they're like they're very French brands but um, it's just a carded 
non-superwash merino with a mohair yarn lace weight and it's just it's lovely and the sweater is so light that is that is something that is um quite funny about it is that it looks like you're really cozy heavily cabled jumper but the loose gauge and the use of the mohair and the honeycomb brioche which spreads out when you block it it makes it very airy and it's super light there's not a lot of yarn on it um i will link below my project page uh, where you can actually see how much yarn i used in terms of weight but it feels very light for the look that it has and um so yeah i'm really really happy with it the color is stunning um at least with the dark <laughs> with the dark moody uh, light that we have now you get the proper color this is the proper color that i see now uh, being recorded on my phone um absolutely love this pine green kind of needed a pine green sweater and i think this is the one my mother also has eyes on it uh, <laughs> i kind of feel like it is a bit short for her because she has a fuller bust than i do um but we'll see how she feels, but maybe she will steal it from me. Um, but yeah, I absolutely loved the project. Um, I'm aware it's a little bit awkward <laughs> to pu publish this now. I think, um, I don't know, we are at like the end of January now and I think the pattern is going to be published soon. So this video shouldn't take too long to be there, but it's, it still has a whole uh, Christmas uh, thing in the middle. So I'm aware it's a little bit awkward to post that now and it was a little bit choppy but um, yeah I hope you enjoyed this new project focus like I said I really hope to do more of them this year uh, we'll see <laughs> we'll see how that goes but uh, yeah um, let me know what kind of project would you like to see in these videos I'd be curious to see what you'd be interested in for this format and yeah I'm gonna leave you now, thank you so much for watching and I will see you next time either on the podcast or on a new project focus video. Bye!